Northern California's Bay Area. Here is the stage for a truly remarkable natural occurrence. Every year, a great migration is made by one of the world's most mysterious species. To reach this utopian destination, these unique mammals will instinctively embark on a nomadic journey from all corners of the world. This is the Developers Triterapsis, or as it is more commonly known, the developer. Eleven and a half months of hibernation has taken its toll. And the sun is harsh as these nocturnal cave-dwelling creatures must greet daylight. For most, this momentous migration is their first, while for a select few, the pilgrimage is a time-honored tradition. Originating in the remote garages of Silicon Valley, developers evolved at an unprecedented speed. To understand how, we must observe them here, in their sacred temple. And so, it begins. As developers congregate at the event, access to the herd can be hard to come by. For some, blending in is easier said than done. To distinguish themselves, developers identify each other through decorative tribal symbols. These extraordinary plumages are designed to entice and attract. Here, a pack of rogue younglings at play. The safety of numbers allows them to... Oh, wait a moment. They have now entrapped an indigenous silver-crested king developer. Although tempting, one may look at, but not touch, the mane. The feeding frenzy at the great gathering. Moving in like a pack of famished piranhas, this frugal breed will spare no morsel. Those who can pull rank on prime cuts. The event culminates in what is known as the keynote. As the doors open, a behavioral anomaly can be found. Developers running at full speed, battling to secure a coveted front row seat. Following the ceremony, the latest beta software is unleashed. Its nature at its cruelest. Only the strongest apps will survive. The many languages of the developer are a mystery to modern science. Just look at these letters, symbols, formulas, and mumbled jargon. Only these enlightened shamans can decode their true meaning. The creative bonds formed during the Great Migration will enable these geniuses to unlock our future world. The developer is, no doubt, a species scientist will continue to study for millennia. student developers. Good morning and welcome to WWDC 2018. It is great to be back in San Jose with everyone. We have developers here from all over the world this morning, from 77 countries. That's more than ever before. And I couldn't be happier to announce that we now have over 20 million Apple developers around the world. That's more than ever before. We've got 6,000 folks in the hall this morning. Uh, welcome. And many millions more watching online. Now, the way that de developers get to share their amazing work is through the App Store. 
Your creativity and hard work have made the App Store the best place to get the very best apps. Next month, the App Store turns 10. And in these 10 years, the App Store has fundamentally changed the way we all live. It's enabled countless new companies, created tens of millions of jobs, spawned entirely new industries, and it has forever changed our lives. The App Store is the world's largest app marketplace. And we now welcome over 500 million weekly visitors. This is mind blowing. It's the most incredible app marketplace that the world has ever seen. We're also happy to announce that this week, we're going to achieve another huge milestone. The money that developers have earned through the App Store will top $100 billion. This is, this is just, this is beyond remarkable. The App Store is clearly the best place for you to be rewarded for your hard work and creativity. Now at Apple, we know that developers are a powerful group of creators, that they can achieve and they can um, uh, develop anything that they can imagine with their code. We want more people to learn the power of code. And it all starts with Swift and Swift Playgrounds. We created Swift to make it easy, to make it so easy to learn to code that it was pretty easy as our products are to use. Swift is extremely popular. In fact, it's the fastest growing programming language out there. Now, Apple developers are already using it in huge numbers. In fact, over 350,000 apps have been written in Swift on the App Store. Now, we believe that coding is an essential skill and believe it should be offered by every school in the world. Now, learning to code has so many benefits. It develops problem solving and critical thinking skills. That's why we created Everyone Can Code with free teaching and learning resources so that everyone could learn to code. It's been so successful and is now available to tens of millions of students around the world. Just imagine what this new generation of coders will create. Whatever it is, I'm sure that it's gonna change the world. At Apple, changing the world and making it a better place is what it's all about for us. We aim to put the customer at the center of everything that we do. That's why, together with you, the developer community, we're working hard to provide new and better experiences for our customers to help them live a better day. And these experiences, of course, are expressed through our four amazing platforms. Today is all about software, and we've got some very exciting updates across all four platforms. We're gonna get started with iOS. iOS embodies our philosophy of putting the customer at the center of everything that we design. Every year, we deliver a major iOS update that brings awesome new features that will impact the world. To tell you all about what we have planned for this year, I'd like to introduce Craig Federighi. Craig. Hey, good morning. All right. Well, our next big release of iOS is, you guessed it, iOS 12. Now, <laughs> our customers, of course, are gonna receive iOS 12 as a free software update. Now, it's easy to forget now, but iOS pioneered this approach of helping you get more out of the device you already own through free updates. And some of those updates have been really quite profound, like the App Store, giving us a whole new way to discover and download apps, 
It itself was delivered via software update, as were the folders we used to organize those apps. And can you imagine living without Find My iPhone or iMessage with its end-to-end -end securely encrypted messaging? Or the revolution in iPad productivity with slide over, split view, and drag and drop? Or AR, changing the way we interact with the world around us, all delivered via software updates? And of course, we want to get these improvements to as many of our customers as possible. iOS 11 supports devices that were introduced as far back as 2013, like the iPhone 5S. And we just love the way customers race to update to our newest releases. In fact, half of our customers upgraded to iOS 11 in just seven weeks. It's, it's incredible. Now, as we stand here today, 81% of our over a billion active iOS devices are running our latest release. And now, when you look at the competition, well, <laughs> it's hard to say they really have a software update model. So iOS has the fastest adoption of any operating system, but what's much more important to us is customer satisfaction. And we're thrilled to report that customer sat for iOS 11 is at 95%. Now, delivering all of these features across such a wide range of devices while maintaining high performance is a challenge we take really seriously. And so for iOS 12, we are doubling down on performance. We're working top to bottom, making improvements to make your device faster and more responsive. And because we want these changes to be available to the full range of our customers, iOS 12 will be available on all the same devices as iOS 11. This is the largest base ever supported by an Apple release. And we're focusing our efforts especially on the oldest devices. And while it's still early days, we're really pleased with some of the results we're seeing. And so I'd like to share some with you. And I'm gonna use an example of a popular phone from a few years ago. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. Now on that device, iOS 12 delivers a number of improvements across common operations. You'll see that apps launch up to 40% faster. The keyboard can come up up to 50% faster. And you can slide to take a photo at up to 70% faster. Now, our deepest focus this year is optimizing the system when it's under load. And that's where you need performance the most and where iOS 12 really shines. Now, we've put iOS 12 through our stress test and we saw in those conditions, share sheet coming up twice as fast and apps launching twice as fast. These are big, big improvements. Now, this took changes, thank you very much. This took improvements in many, many places in the system. And I wanna highlight just one, and it starts with the silicon. You know, our tight collaboration with our tip te chip team has enabled us to optimize iOS across the full range of our A-series silicon. Now, CPUs traditionally respond to increased demand for performance by slowly ramping up their clock speed. Well, now in iOS 12, we're much smarter. When we detect that you need a burst of performance, like when you begin scrolling or launching an app, we ramp up uh, processor performance instantly to its highest states, delivering high performance, and then ramp it down just as fast to preserve battery life. Now, these are just some of the improvements that are coming to not just our older devices, but the full range of devices. And that's a quick update on performance. Now, if this is all we've done in iOS 12, I think it would be a great release. But we've done more, much more. And we have a lot to cover today. And it starts with augmented reality. You know, yeah. Now, AR is transformational technology. By bringing experiences into the real world, it enables all kinds of new experiences, changing the way we have fun and the way we work. 
And in iOS 12, we have wanted to make an easy way to experience AR across the system. And to do that, we got together with some of the greatest minds in 3D at Pixar. And together, we created a new file format for AR. It's called USDZ. And it's a compact single file format that's optimized for sharing while retaining great 3D graphics and even animations. Now, you can use USDZ across the system from the Files app to Safari to even sharing them over messages and mail. And what's great is you can place these 3D objects into the real world. It's something that's like AR quick look. It's really awesome. Now, we want all kinds of creatives to be able to create content for AR. And so we're working with the leading companies for 3D tools and 3D libraries to bring support, their support for USDZ. Now, one company that's been all in on USDZ and AR Kit is Adobe. And to tell you about what they're up to, I'd like to invite Abe Parasnis, their CTO, to the stage. Abe. Thanks, Craig. It's great to be here this morning. So at Adobe, we believe augmented reality is an incredibly important technology. And with ARKit, Apple is by far the most powerful platform for AR. So earlier, Craig talked about USDZ format. It's actually a pretty big deal. There is now a way to deliver AR experiences across the entire iOS experience. And so today, we are actually announce, announcing that we are going to bring native USDZ support to Adobe's Creative Cloud. <laughs> With Creative Cloud, designers and developers will now be able to use familiar apps, apps that they know and love, like Photoshop or Dimension, to create amazing AR content and bring it easily via USDZ. And of course, we're not going to stop there. We are going to bring the power of immersive design to Creative Cloud with a new set of services and applications, including a brand new iOS application that's going to let all of you design amazing AR experiences quickly. So you will be able to bring in images, videos, text, any object from Creative Cloud directly into a native AR environment. In fact, for the first time with Creative Cloud and iOS, you will have a what you see is what you get editing in AR. It's pretty cool. So come join us this afternoon, State of the Union, where we're going to give you a sneak peek of some of these new immersive design tools for the first time. Thanks. Back to you, Craig. Thank you, Andre. Now, a critical part of enabling AR is accurate measurement. And fortunately, the precise calibration of sensors in iOS devices and our tight hardware software integration mean that we do this really well. And we wanted to enable everyone to take advantage of this capability. So we're introducing a new app, and it's called Measure. It makes it really easy to measure objects, detect rectangles and get their dimensions, and measure lines along surfaces. And I'd like to show it to you now. Now, in looking for something to measure, I ended up digging through the, uh, the attic and uh, came upon my uh, old suitcase from my traveling days in college. A lot of, lot of memories in here. Now, I'm actually in the, the Measure app, you see, I can easily measure along this suitcase by just tapping and dragging out a line like that. And check that out. It's a measurement. Now, what's really cool is I can extend these measurements. So I can just tap, drag along another edge just like that, and even take it into full 3D dragging down to the bottom like that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> now, I mentioned that we could automatically detect rectangles and show you dimensions of objects. So I have a photo here, actually. It's one my mom always wanted me to travel with of uh, me as a baby. And so, <laughs> you see, 
what I can do with measure is it automatically detects the dimensions of that photo. I can just tap and get, oh yeah, cute little baby, wasn't I? And you can get measurements just like that. It's really fantastic. Now, I'd like to turn now to USDZ and its support throughout the system. You know, you can experience USDZ in so many places, and one of those places is news. Now, here's an article, and we'll, we're all accustomed to seeing images in news articles, but check this out. Here you see a USDZ asset, and I can just tap on this little 3D control and jump right in and experience it. You can see the amazing animations that are possible, and of course, it's fully interactive. So I can zoom in and pan. Isn't that amazing? Now, USDZ is also great in the web. So here I am at the Fender website, and they actually let you configure your guitar with the kind of finish and pick guard that you want. So I can select a configuration option here, and then I can see the guitar I've configured. So I'm just gonna tap in. Of course, I can see the guitar here, but wouldn't it be cool if I could see it in the real world, in its real size? Well, there it is. Check that out. I think I'm gonna capture that for posterity. And that's a quick look at USDZ and measure in iOS 12. Next, thank you. Next, I'd like to talk about the key technology behind these augmented reality experiences, and that's ARKit. ARKit opens up the world of AR to hundreds of millions of users, making it the world's largest AR platform by far. And we're on a relentless pace of advancement with AR, and that continues today with AR Kit 2. AR, yeah. yes. AR Kit 2 delivers advances with improved face tracking, more realistic rendering, and support for 3D object detection and persistence, which enables launching into AR experiences associated with a particular object or a physical space like starting a game built around a physical toy, or having a physical classroom serve as the foundation for a lesson that was authored in AR. But probably best is the support for shared experiences. Now this delivers true multi-user augmented reality. You and the people around you will be able to, able to see your own perspective on a common virtual environment. And to help all you developers get started, we created this sample app written in Swift that you'll all be getting today. Now check out how both players and even a third observer can all experience the same environment in real time. It's really fun. Now, we've also brought in a select few developers into our labs over the last couple weeks to work with ARKit, and they love it. Now, one of them, is Lego, and what they've done is so fun, you just need to see it. So I'm pleased to invite Martin Sanders, Director of Innovation of Lego, to the stage to give you a live demonstration. Martin. That's great, thank you very much. Creating and playing with physical Lego sets brings great joy to millions of children and Lego fans all over the world. And now, with ARKit 2, we get to expand those creative possibilities like never before and take things beyond the physical. What we try to do is combine physical and digital together to really open up those creative play possibilities because our Lego sets are really the start point for all of those children's imaginations. And when we get a chance to really embed ARKit 2, it takes it to the next level. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have Assembly Square. It's one of our Lego creator sets and already has so many great details, it's awesome to play with. But wouldn't it be great if we could take things even further? Well now, with 3D object detection, we get to recognize our models and bring them to life. And just look at all of those rich details we can now bring into our sets. Because when we combine physical and digital together like this, it really opens up those creative play possibilities. And there's so much to do here. If you see these icons above people and objects, well, they represent missions and stories that we can explore. 
And with a world as rich and as immersive as this, who wouldn't want to play? So let's add a character. How about this little guy here? Welcome back. Let's go on an adventure. Awesome, let's go on an adventure. But going on an adventure with friends is often way more fun. So Anders, why don't you jump on in here? I'm always up for an adventure. Perfect, because now, with our Kit 2's multi-user support, we get to play with up to four friends in the same space. Let's go ahead and add a few things from our collection, Anders. Okay, I will add a bank over here. Very nice, I like it. How about taking this for a spin? Oh, that's cool. Because just look at all those rich details you can see on the outside of the building and even on the inside. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add this guy. He's definitely gonna keep the bank safe. Oh look, my character's hungry. Let's take him over to the bakery. Well, let's see what they have. Because now with AR Kit 2, we get to see inside our physical creations and check out all the details that were hidden before. Got a ballerina, little uh, music session going on. And uh, looks like a bathroom or something. Oops, sorry. Moving on. Oh, another play trigger in the bakery. Let's see what happens when I click on this. Fresh messes. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look too good. Anna's got a situation. I'm going to need your help over here. Okay, okay, okay. I've got a fire truck. Perfect. You put out those flames while. Oh, oh dear. Somebody's got themselves trapped on the roof. So I'm going to use this helicopter to go and uh, pick up these clowns. How are you getting on down there, Anders? I'm almost done, almost done. Great, those guys are safe. And the flames look like they're almost out. Perfect, we did it. Yeah, and what? Good job, Anders. And we even unlocked a new item for our collection. But the fun doesn't need to end there, because with ARKit 2, we get to save our entire world back into our physical set and pick up where we left off. Right, that's awesome, so much fun. But what makes this truly amazing is that with just a single LEGO creation and ARKit 2, it really opens up those creative play possibilities. So look out for more LEGO AR experiences in the App Store later this year. Thank you very much, everybody. Isn't that great? So that's our update on AR in iOS 12. Next, I'd like to turn to photos. You know, over a trillion photos are captured on iPhone each year. And photos is the best way to relive and share those moments. This year, we're making photos even better. And it starts with search. Search has powerful object and scene recognition. It lets you search for photos based on things like searching for cars, or dogs, or flowers. And it's a great way to explore your library. But in iOS 12, search now starts working for you even before you start typing with search suggestions. It'll highlight things for you like key moments and people that are important to you places where you've taken some great photos, and even categories of photos like hiking and water sports. And search is much more powerful than ever. You can search for places by business name. So you could search for SF MoMA or even a broad category like museum. And photos indexes over four million events by time and place, things like sporting events and concerts. And so you can search for them and find photos you took at those events and search is super powerful. You can now search for multiple search terms, like surfing and vacation, and even get suggestions for additional search terms to help you find exactly what you're looking for. And now in iOS 12, we have an all new tab. It's called For You. And with For You, you have all of your memories, those great memory movies, but more like featured photos, highlighting a photo that you took on this day in past years, and Effect suggestions, for instance, suggesting looping a live photo or applying a new portrait effect to one of your portrait photos. And we even highlight your shared album activity. Now, when it comes to sharing, there are many ways you can share photos, 
But our focus is on sharing great photos with the people you care about most. And that's why this year in For You, we've added sharing suggestions. So imagine you've gone out for a great dinner with some friends and you took some photos. Well, afterwards in For You, you'll see a suggestion like this to share those photos. If you tap in, you'll see that Photos is even recommending a set of photos that, from that set that you might wanna share and suggests who you might wanna share them with based in part by the people that appeared in the photos. When you share them, they're shared at full resolution out of your iCloud photo library. And when your friend receives them, something really magical happens. Their phone searches their libraries for other photos they took at that event and suggests that they share them back to you so you both can end up with the full set. Now this is built around iMessage, so of course it's private using end-to-end -end encryption, and all of those smarts are done with on-device machine learning. So that's your quick update on photos in iOS 12. And next, let's turn to Siri. Now Siri is by far the world's most used digital assistant, with over 10 billion requests processed per month. And because Siri works across all your devices, it's always there to help you through your day getting things done. Now we all know that Siri works with many third-party apps for things like messaging, ride sharing, uh, and payments. But we wanted to make Siri able to do much more for you. And we're doing that by taking advantage of the power of apps with a new feature we call Shortcuts. Now with Shortcuts, any app can expose quick actions to Siri. Let's look at some examples. Now, say you have the Tile app because you're always losing your keys. Well, the Tile app can expose the option to add a shortcut to Siri. You can assign your own phrase, such as, I lost my keys, would be a good choice. And when you then say it, Siri will automatically activate Tile and show you right in the Siri UI, start ringing your Tile just like that. It's really great. Of course, there's so many uses for this kind of thing. You could say game time to get your team's schedule from Team Snap, or help me relax to kick off a meditation, or order my groceries to order your usual. You know, with millions of apps, Shortcut enables incredible possibilities for how you use Siri. Now, as you know, Siri is more than just a voice. Siri's working all the time in the background to make proactive suggestions for you, even before you ask. And now with uh, shortcuts, Siri can do so much more. So for instance, let's say you order a coffee every morning at Phil's before you go to work. Well now, Siri can suggest right on your lock screen that you do that. You tap on it and you can place the order right from there. Or if when you get to the gym, you use Aptive to track workouts, well that suggestion will appear right on your lock screen. And this even works when you pull down into search. You'll get great suggestions, like say you're running late for a meeting, well Siri will suggest you text the meeting organizer. Or when you go to the movie, suggest that you turn on Do Not Disturb, that's just being considerate. And remind you to call grandma on her birthday. Just tap and it'll dial the call for you. Now, we think we're all gonna really enjoy using shortcuts. And so we went a step further. We wanted to let you create your own shortcuts as users by, of multiple steps across multiple applications. And we're doing it with a new Shortcuts app. So with the Shortcuts app, you could do something like create a, a shortcut for surf time. And it could go get you the surf report, look up the current weather, get you the ETA to the beach, and even create a reminder for you to put on sunscreen when you get there. Now, it's all done with simple drag and drop steps in the Shortcuts editor right here. It's really easy. Now, to show you how Shortcuts can streamline your day, I'd like to invite one of our leaders from our Siri Shortcuts project, Kim Beverett, to the stage to give you a live demo. Kim. Hey. I am so stoked to show you Siri shortcuts. To do that, I'm gonna walk you through my day. So imagine it's the morning, I'm headed to work, and I pick up my phone, and I see this suggestion from Phil's Coffee. 
Siri has learned that I do this most mornings, so now I can just tap on the suggestion, and I see all the details I need to confirm my perfect mint mojito right here on the lock screen without even going into the app. So let's get caffeinated, and I'm done. Fast forward a little bit, and I'm sitting at my desk at my office, and I need to know when my next meeting is. I'll go to the up next widget, and it looks like I'm running a little late for a rather important meeting, so I should probably let someone know. And it looks like Shortcuts is a few steps ahead of me. I could call into the meeting, or I could let the organizer know that I'm running late. I should probably tell Ari what's up. That looks like just what I want to say. Sorry, Ari, let's send it. Perfect. I also want to sh show you how you can add a shortcut to Siri. So let's take a look at Kayak. I keep all of my travel details in Kayak. Most important is my post -dub -dub DC relaxation trip to Los Angeles. You can see I've got my flight, my hotel, all the details, everything I need. But what I really want is to be able to use this and get to this information with my voice while I'm on the go. So let's head back. And I can just tap Add to Siri record my custom phrase, travel plans. And I am done. So now, when I land at the airport and I'm about to get in the cab and I could really use that hotel address, I can just say, travel plans. Kayak says, your hotel is at 929 South Broadway. You can check in after 3 p.m. Isn't that cool? It's pretty cool. So I would love to be on that vacation, but I should, I don't know, probably finish this demo. So let's head back to work, and I can show you how the Shortcuts app can help me with my commute home. We start in the gallery, where there's hundreds of pre-made shortcuts that you can download, or we can hop over to the library, and I've got a bunch of shortcuts here, but I want to show you my heading home shortcut. You can see that it's just really a series of steps. It grabs my location and my travel time, and it sends my ETA to my roommate. It sets my home kit thermostat to 70 degrees, and it turns on my fan. And last, it gets directions home with Apple Maps with the best route to avoid traffic. Now, this is already pretty cool, but I happen to be an NPR news junkie, so I should probably just add that to my shortcut to save me some trouble on the ride home. Let's tap Search. And there's a bunch I can add here, but I can just tap Siri Suggestions, and there it is, play KQED radio, we'll drag this in, drop it, and we're set. I've already added this shortcut to Siri with the custom phrase heading home, so now, whenever I leave work, I can just say, heading home. You will get there in one hour. I sent a message to Cheryl. Your thermostat is set to 70 degrees, and I turned on the fan, playing KQED radio. Right? That's Siri Shortcuts in iOS 12. Thank you so much. And that's Siri Shortcuts. It works on iPhone and iPad. And of course, you can run your shortcuts from your HomePod and your Apple Watch. And that's your quick update on Siri. Next, let's talk about apps. And to tell you about the latest, I'm gonna hand it off to Susan. Susan. Hello. Thanks, Craig, and it is so great to be here. I'm excited to tell you about some great updates in some of our most popular apps, starting with one of my favorites, News. So, <clears throat> News is a personalized feed where you can see all the stories you want to read pulled together from trusted sources. And our top stories are handpicked by the Apple News editorial team uh, to, to make a, a great collection of curated content. With our new Browse tab, you can discover new channels and topics, and we've made it even easier to dump, jump to your favorites, because that's why they're your favorites, right? News shines on the iPad. We've added a new sidebar, and it's a great way to navigate. It makes it easy, and I think fun, to dig into the areas you're most interested in. So that's news. 
Now, we've completely rebuilt the Stocks app, and it's got a beautiful new design. Of course, you can still see the stock prices and the changes at a glance, but we've added spark lines, those little charts, that show the stock performance throughout the day. And that's cool, but are you ready? We are so excited to announce we're bringing Apple News to stocks. I'm really excited about that. And the top stories in stocks features business news, right, curated by the Apple News editors. It's pretty terrific. You can tap on any stock to get a more detailed view, so you can see an interactive chart that now includes after hours pricing. And you see relevant headlines from Apple News curated by our Apple News editor. So it looks great. And if you tap on one of those headlines, you'll see the full article without leaving the app. And of course, it's formatted to look gorgeous on the iPhone. Now, with iOS 12, we're bringing stocks to iPad. It's pretty great, and we take advantage of the larger display so you can keep your eye on your stocks on the left while you browse through your financial news. It's a pretty great experience. Next up, voice memos. We've also completely rebuilt voice memos to make it even easier to use. And we're bringing voice memos to the iPad for the first time. Importantly, we've also added iCloud support, so your recordings stay in sync across all your devices. We think iPad users are just gonna love this. And we think that iBooks is the best way to discover and experience eBooks, as well as audiobooks. And with iOS 12, we're inducing an all new design. And we think the update is so great, we're calling it Apple Books, a new name. Very dramatic. We dropped the eye. Apple Books has some great new features. For example, Reading Now, with a preview that makes it really easy for you to pick up reading right where you left off. And there's so much more, including a stunning new store that makes browsing through your eBooks and audiobooks better than ever. We love these updates, and we think you will too. But we also have a smart and safe way to use your apps in the car. I think you know I'm talking about CarPlay. CarPlay already supports third-party audio and voice messaging, uh, you know, voice calling and messaging apps. You probably know that. But what you might not know is with iOS 12, CarPlay will also support third-party <laughs> navigation apps. So now you have even more choices when you use CarPlay. That is a really quick look at some of our app dates. And Craig, back to you. Thank you, Susan. Well, now I'd like to take a moment to talk about something that's on a lot of people's minds lately. You know, iPhone and iPad are some of the most powerful tools ever created for learning exploring, and keeping in touch. But some apps demand more of our attention than we might even realize. They beg us to use our phone when we really should be occupying ourselves with something else. They send us flurries of notifications, trying to draw us in for fear of missing out. And some of us, it's become such a habit that you know, we might not even recognize just how distracted we've become. Well, we've thought deeply about this. And today, we're announcing a comprehensive set of built-in features to help you limit distraction, focus, and understand how you're spending your time, and balance the many things that are important to you. Now, it starts with do not disturb. There, there are times of the day, or times when you just don't want to be disturbed, and one of those, of course, is at night. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you look at your phone, maybe just to check the time, and you're confronted with something like this, <laughs> barrage of notifications that spin you up and keep you from falling back asleep. And so we're introducing Do Not Disturb During Bedtime, where all you'll see is this, 
nothing to get you spun up. And in the morning, yeah. In the morning when you wake up, you're gently eased into your day, you can tap when you want to start confronting those notifications. <laughs> now, we've all found ourselves in situations like this. <laughs> now, rest assured, he stuck the landing on this one. Uh, but now, Do Not Disturb can help. And we've made it easier than ever to use Do Not Disturb because now we have a great new mode where when you press into Do Not Disturb and Control Center, you can set an ending time for Do Not Disturb for when you leave a particular location or when an event ends on your calendar. So I think we're all gonna be using Do Not Disturb a bunch more. Now, next I wanna talk about notifications. Now, notifications help keep us informed and connected to important things that happen throughout the day. And we'd, we'd like to give you more control over how many notifications you receive. And so we're enabling what we call instant tuning for notifications right from the lock screen. You can press in to a notification, and from there you can decide to send future notifications from that app directly to Notification Center, bypassing your lock screen, or turn them off altogether. And Siri will even help by suggesting that you turn off notifications for apps that you're no longer using. Now, we also wanted to give you help managing large numbers of notifications. So I'm thrilled to announce that we're bringing to iOS support for grouped notifications. <laughs> notifications are grouped not just by app, but also by topic and thread. It gives you a great overview of the notifications you've received. You can tap in and look at a particular group, but of course, just as important, with a single swipe, you can triage a whole group of notifications away. So that's notifications. Now, in addition to these great features for helping you limit distractions, we wanted to go further. And it's with a feature we call Screen Time. Screen Time empowers you with both insight and control over how you spend your time. And it starts with reports. Every week, you get a weekly activity summary that details how you used your iPhone or iPad. You tap in and you get to view your full activity report. It's really detailed. You get deep insight on how much time you're spending, where you're spending it, and even how your use breaks down during the day uh, or the night. You get a summary of the time you're spending in apps, how much time you're spending, how often per hour you're picking up your phone and what's drawing you in, and what apps are sending you the most notifications. Now, equipped with this insight, you can make decisions about how much time you wanna spend with your device each day. But we know there are people who would like a little extra help in managing their use of apps, and for them we've created app limits. So if in your activity report, you see an app where you might wanna be spending a little bit less time, well, you can set your own limit. And then during the day, when you're using the app, you'll receive a helpful notification letting you know time is almost up. <laughs> and once you've reached, reached your limit, instead of the app, you'll see this. It's time to move on. Now, we'll let you grant yourself an extension if you want but we'll give you a reminder later to move along. Now, this is also in sync across your iPhone and iPad, so your limits apply to your total usage. And we think this is gonna be helpful for many people, but especially for some kids. And we know this is something that can help families achieve the right balance for them. And of course it starts with providing your kids with great information, so they get an activity report of their own, but as a parent, you get one as well on your device. And based on what you see, you have the option of creating allowances. And, <laughs> now, you have many options. One of them is downtime, time when you want your kids to unplug altogether, for instance, at bedtime. And you can also limit uh, your kids' time in apps by category or by individual app. 
Now, there's some apps you may want to always allow them to use. For instance, you may want them to be able to get at the phone at all, all times so they can contact you. Or you may want to give them access to educational apps. And you can also limit access to only movies, apps, and websites that you deem age appropriate. Now, this works, of course, across their iPhone and iPad, and it uses family sharing, so it's super easy to set up, and you can manage it all remotely from your parent parental device. And so that are some, are some uh, screen time and some great features to help you better manage your time. Now, next, I'd like to talk about one of the most important uses of our devices, and that's communication. And we'll start with messages. Messages has given us fun ways to express ourselves with emoji and now animoji. And one of the things that make animoji so fun is how expressive they are, you know, from smiles to frowns to nods of the head and blinking of the eye. Animoji do such an amazing job tracking our expressions. And this year, we're taking Animoji to a whole new level, the breakthrough new technology we call tongue detection. <laughs> That's right. Now you can make your favorite Animoji do this. <laughs> we're all going to be sticking out our tongues to our phones in the near future. Now, we've also, we're also introducing some great new Animoji that I think you're all going to love, like Ghost. Koala, tiger, and T-Rex. <laughs> but we wanted to take Animoji even further by making them even more personal. So I'm thrilled today to announce the arrival of the era of Memoji. <laughs> With, that's right. With Memoji, you can create your very own personalized Animoji. Now, these Animoji can look like you or the real you. And we've worked hard to build a deep set of customization options to let our customers create an incredibly diverse set of Memoji. It's really incredible what you can create. And we've designed a beautiful new experience to create these Memoji that makes the process fun and easy. Now, to tell you more about it, I'd like to invite one of the managers of our messages and Animoji features, Kelsey Peterson, to give you a live demo. Kelsey. Good morning. I cannot wait to tell you what's new with messages. Let's get started with Animoji. First, you need to meet the newest members of the team. We've got a new cat in town, our tiger. She's so cute. And now, my personal favorite, the koala. Oops, just getting excited, scrolling through here. They can't all be cute and cuddly though, so here's our T-Rex. And we have our very own friendly little ghost. So much fun. And if I swipe right, here's where I can create my very own Memoji. Let me show you just how easy it is. I recently chopped my hair, so I want one that matches the new me. So I've selected a skin color, and now I'm trying to figure out just the right amount of freckles. So real Goldilocks scenario. Yeah, these are just right. Okay, on to the main event. There are so many hairstyles to choose from. First, I'm gonna grab my color, and then like I said, I need to go a little bit shorter. All right. Mm, nope, this is the one. Now that I'm all set, I can of course select my eye color. And what's really amazing is as I'm making changes, the character up above is coming to life. There are tons of options for me to customize. I could add earrings, but what I really want is a great pair of sunnies. So I'm gonna come over to eyewear and pick out some frames. Hmm, maybe not for today. Think I need two lenses. 
These are the ones. Now that I have frames, I'm gonna tint my lenses to make a great pair of sunglasses. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I think I'm all set. I'll tap done, which saves my brandly created Memoji right here into the drawer alongside the rest of my team. And that's how simple it is to create your very own Memoji. Now I have a brand new feature to introduce you to. This wasn't even in Craig's slides. We are bringing fun effects into the messages camera. Let's take a look. I have a message here from my partner. It looks like he's informing me that he's bought our dog, Ferdinand, yet another tiny dog hat. This isn't even the first. I think this is the perfect opportunity for a response with this new fun camera. So I'll tap to pull up the camera, and then I can see this little star over here on the left. Tapping on that, gives me a strip with all sorts of new effects. So I could add things like shapes or text, but let's check out these filters. Ooh, so this is comic book. It's really fun, but for a response about a tiny dog hat, I think I'm gonna go in a different artistic direction. So what I really need to do is add a sticker from one of my favorite sticker packs. Ferdy looked really excited about that new dog hat. So I'm gonna put him right here. And now we have an all new way for you to use an emoji. I can apply my favorite an emoji right here, live. <laughs> Here's the emoji I just created, but I actually have just the one. It's of me in a very similar red hat, which is kind of perfect for twinning with my pup. So I'm gonna set up my shot, <laughs> snap, and send. And that's a demo of the fun new effects and messages. Back to you, Craig. So that's Memoji and some fun new effects in the camera and messages. Next, let's talk about FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> FaceTime is the way that so many of us connect with the people in our lives and share some of our most important moments. And it's helped us deepen our connection with people important to us wherever they are. And of course, it's a fun place just to hang out. Now this year, FaceTime is gonna take a big leap forward because today we're introducing group FaceTime. Now, you'll be able to FaceTime with two people, three people, actually up to 32 simultaneous participants. Setting up a group call couldn't be easier. Just instead of typing one person's name, you can do many. You can ring them by tapping audio or video. But we also introduced a great new way because FaceTime is now integrated into messages. So you can quickly go from a group chat you have going directly in to a group FaceTime. And members of the group can join in and drop out at any time. It's really great. Would you like to see it? Well, let's do a demo. Well, I think for our first live demo of group FaceTime, I'm gonna uh, contact the folks back in Cupertino. Now I can just dive in to this conversation I have going with the members of the FaceTime team. And it looks like actually they're already on a group FaceTime call, so I'm just gonna join right in. Hey, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Now check it out. So it's this beautiful FaceTime UI. We have these big, gorgeous tiles right up front where you see some of the leaders of the FaceTime team. And down at the bottom, there's an area we call the roster that contains everybody else. And of course, I'm right there in the lower right-hand corner. Hey, Craig. Wait, am I on the big screen? <laughs> yes, Lauren, this is not a test. You're in front of 6,000 of your biggest new fans. 
Lauren. Now, what you probably notice is when Lauren spoke, her tile automatically got larger to reflect her prominence in the conversation. This is totally automatic. Uh, hey, Roberto, how's it going back there in Cupertino? I'd say it's going pretty well. And uh, Lauren, sorry for stealing your spotlight. <laughs> So this works, of course, for people in the roster as well. When they speak, they come forward. Uh, hey, Christopher, you ready to make your big entrance? Finally, my moment has come. Hello, world. <laughs> now, well done. Now, you can control this, too. So if I want to bring Woody front and center, I just double tap. There he is. Now, uh, Woody, your baby is performing admirably here. Thanks, Craig. It's exciting to finally be able to share group FaceTime with everyone. It sure is. Now, we have not only all of this, but we've also brought the fun effects to the FaceTime camera. I can just tap in and I have access to Animoji, filters, and all of my sticker packs. And everyone else on the call can apply them too. Wow, now this is the future. Hey, Craig, check this out. I'm a comic book koala, something I've always wanted to be. <laughs> I'm glad you've finally been able to express that side of yourself, Roberto. Hey, Tim, is that you? Yeah, it's me. I signed up to help test FaceTime. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you, Tim. Every little bit counts. Happy to help, and thanks to everyone on the FaceTime team for making it a reality. I can't wait to start using it every Sunday night to call the leadership team. <laughs> looking forward to that, Tim. Of course, what I'm really looking forward to is getting group FaceTime to everyone on iOS 12. Thanks, guys, for a fantastic call. We'll see you back in Cupertino. Bye, Greg. So that's group FaceTime. It works on iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and you can even answer an audio on your wrist on your Apple Watch. So that's FaceTime and messages, and this is iOS 12. Improved performance, new AR experiences, Siri suggestions, screen time, Memoji and fun effects in the messages camera, and group FaceTime. I hope you like it. I'm gonna hand it back to Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. iOS 12 looks fantastic, and we can't wait for everyone to get their hands on it. Next up, we'd like to talk about the Apple Watch. Yeah. When we began development of the watch many years ago, we had a vision for just how impactful and essential it could become in our lives. So we worked very hard to create something that you would love and want to wear all the time. And customers do love it. In fact, Apple Watch is number one in customer satisfaction. And, and not just this year, but every single year since we launched in 2015. And growth has been off the charts. Apple Watch grew 60% last year. We're constantly hearing from customers about the many ways that the Apple Watch has changed their lives. And I'd like to share just one of them with you this morning. Mary Dobgen was boating with her husband, John, when due to a medical condition, all of John's muscles went completely limp and he fell into the ice cold water. With her arms wrapped around John to keep him from drowning, Mary could not reach her phone to call for help. But with her Apple Watch, she was able to call Siri, or to, to use Siri to call 911, rescuers soon arrived, and saved John's life. As as Mary told us, if it wasn't for my Apple Watch, he really would not be here today. This is just one of the many stories that we've heard about, about how Apple Watch is impacting people's lives. They range from getting people to be more active, to helping users uh, live a healthier life, or even to alerting users to an elevated heart rate. 
Apple Watch brings such amazing capabilities right to the wrist. And of course, at the heart of this is watchOS. We're excited to introduce watchOS 5 today, which brings even more ways for you to stay active and connected. And I'd like to hand it off to Kevin Lynch to tell you all about it. Kevin? Good morning. You know, stories like that about how Apple Watch is supporting people around the world in even extreme situations like Mary and John's, but also in their daily lives is really super motivating to us as a team. And there are things you do every day that shape your life. And Apple Watch has two key areas it's working to help you support those activities every day. First, staying active to increase your well-being and health. And second, being connected to the people and the information that you care most about. We're moving watchOS forward in both of these areas. Let's start with health and fitness. Now, much of the power in the health and fitness features that we put in Watch are really empowered by the investment we do to make sure the data you see is accurate. The data from our custom-built heart rate sensor, accelerometer, gyro, GPS are all thoroughly validated. In fact, from our fitness lab, we've studied over six terabytes of data, where 12,000 study participants logged over 90,000 hours of sessions. They actually burned 2.3 million calories doing this. We believe this is the largest biometric data collection of its kind. And we take this information and we work, work to integrate this seamlessly with the user experience. So when you raise your wrist and you look at your activity rings, the information is not only accurate, but it's also meaningful to you. And we really love hearing about your focus on closing these rings. And we really enable this through a number of ways in Apple Watch. First, of course, we do daily coaching so you can see what your goals are for the day. We also support celebrations when you achieve your goals. And we have special edition challenges, like the most recent Earth Day challenge that we did. And on a monthly basis, we, we do monthly goals that are personalized to you. And of course, the Activity app also supports activity sharing, which has become one of the most popular features of the Activity app. Many of you love the excitement of good old-fashioned competition, though. So in watchOS 5, you can challenge any of your activity sharing friends to a seven-day competition whenever you would like. And if they accept, you each try to win the week by closing your rings and earning points. You earn one point for each percent of a ring that you close. And while you're in the middle of a competition, your progress notifications are updated to not only show you the progress your friend's making, but also where you stand in the competition. And when you win, you receive a new award. We're really excited about this edition, and if you're competitive, it gives you a whole new way to enjoy the activity app. Now, when you're doing... Now, when you do want to go do a workout, there's a lot of workout types you can choose from. And they all have custom algorithms to measure things like calorie burn, pace, distance, elevation gain. And when you're swimming, it even counts laps and detects what swim strokes you're using. And with gym kit, your metrics are in sync with your favorite gym equipment. And we're really excited to bring more enhancements to workouts in watchOS 5, starting with a new workout type for yoga. Now, this works primarily from your heart rate. And we calibrate this to your fitness level through the rest of your day. So now you can more accurately track those yoga sessions, including those intense vinyasa sessions. Now we've also added a new workout type for hiking. This takes into account pace and heart rate and elevation gain, so you can more accurately get exercise credit while you're hiking in steep terrain or really long stages. <laughs> and Apple Watch has become a really great running companion, especially now that we've added GPS and cellular and music streaming. We're making this an even better experience now for training runs and races. In addition to current and average pace, you now have the option to keep track of your rolling mile pace, which is how fast you ran the immediately preceding mile. You can also now set a custom pace alert, so your Apple Watch will tap you when you're above or below the pace that you've set. And finally, runners will now get cadence, so you can see your current steps per minute. We're really excited for runners to try these out. Now, Now, there's sometimes when you forget to start a workout on watch, but you've started working out. And to solve this now, we're adding automatic workout detection. So your Apple Watch will now offer to start tracking a workout if it senses that you're beginning one. And even if you press start sometime after you began working out, you'll get retroactive credit for the workouts that you did. And these start alerts will support all these great workouts on Apple Watch. 
Now, when you reduce the intensity of your movement or your heart rate decreases, but you forget to end your workout, of course, watch will also detect that and suggest that you stop. So all these new features, activity competitions, the new yoga and hiking workout, new features for runners and automatic workout detection are all enabling you to more accurately track your workouts and stay motivated while you do. Now let's talk about being connected. Apple Watch enables you to remain in the moment while also easily connected to the people and information that you care about. And the introduction of cellular made this even better. You can stay connected even when you're going out for an evening, running some errands, or even going for a swim. Or stay in touch when your phone might not be easily available to you. And staying connected with people you love is something that our customers love about Apple Watch. You can easily make or receive a phone call, and you can hear the emotion and tone on the other end of the voice as you talk in, in real time. Or you can use messages to have impromptu, short conversations with loved ones in a message thread. In watchOS 5, you'll have an entirely new way to communicate on your watch. That's real-time voice, but with the spontaneity of short messaging. Did you steal my chips? Maybe. I cannot wait till you go to college. <laughs> Introducing Walkie Talkie. This is a new app on Apple Watch. It's a fun, easy way to talk with friends and family. Let's take a look at how it works. First, you choose who you'd like to enable Walkie Talkie with, and it suggests some people that you often communicate with, so you can easily add them. Now, the first time that you do this, your friend will receive a one-time request to allow a Walkie Talkie connection with you. If, the, if they accept, then you can speak to each other with Walkie Talkie whenever you like. And to do this, you just press to talk, and then your friend can hear your voice just like a Walkie Talkie. And they're gonna feel a haptic and hear a beep beep sound right before your voice comes out. And this new watch to watch connection works over cellular or, or Wi Fi and it has really high audio quality. And it's a lot of fun. We can't wait for you to try this out. That's walkie talkie. <laughs> now, last year we introduced a Siri watch face, which presents the right information to you at the right time. And Siri does this using machine learning, so it's going to get better at predicting your actions over time by combining inputs like the time of day, your location, your daily routines, or which apps you use when. We're making some great enhancements to the Siri watch face now. First, we're adding new content. So now you can get live sports scores, you can get commute time home or to work, or you can see your heart rate, for example, after a workout or your resting heart rate. And we're also adding Siri shortcuts. Those shortcuts you saw coming to iOS 12 are also going to be available in watchOS. So in addition to getting relevant information, you'll also receive predicted shortcuts right on the Siri watch face. So at a wrist raise, you'll be able to directly do things like turn on your leaving home scene, or start an outdoor walk, or play your favorite morning playlist. And these shortcuts appear based on uh, whether you typically do those actions at those times. So super easy now to just tap and do those actions. Also, for the first time, you can now use third-party apps on the Siri watch face. So now you can see both relevant content and shortcuts from your favorite apps. So if you always go running with Nike Plus Run Club at a certain time, or you're logging your meals with Lose It, or you use City Mapper to find your commute home, you just raise your wrist and tap. It's that easy. So new content, support for shortcuts, and third-party apps making for an even more powerful Siri watch face. Now, currently, to talk to Siri, you raise your wrist already. So cool. I mean, and that's a quick look at dark rain. by kind, by date, or even by tag. And they're really easy to use. Now, you can also scrub your stacks. So for instance, I'll just scrub across this stack. You see I can select between different photos, pick one up. Actually, let me just hide mail here, mid-drag. Got a little excited with, my, uh, with all of my stack action. So I can just drag this out and drop it in just like that. And that's a quick look 
at stacks. Now, we've also brought some great new changes to the Finder. I'd like to show them to you now. Now, it starts with a new view. We all uh, enjoy using icon view, list view, there's of course column view, but now we've added an all new view called gallery view. It has a big preview up top, a set of thumbnails along the bottom, and it makes it easy to preview images, video, presentations, documents, spreadsheets, PDFs, and of course, with images, sometimes you wanna know more detail about, for instance, how they were captured. And now the new sidebar in Mojave really helps because it now supports full metadata. So you can see around your photo the camera you took the photo on, the kind of lens, the aperture settings, and so I get a thumbnail instantly of that. Create the magnification here. So I think them and their families. Let's have an incredible week together. Thank you. Yeah.